So I want to make another cute little magnet while I'm home. Definitely going out of the norm, but I'm going to do it. So I have some scrap colors here, and I'm looking to get a gray. I have a brown. It kind of has two browns in it, a little bit of this darker one, but the bulk of it is this brown. Now this does, to me, have a red undertone or like a pink undertone um, compared to like this one that's deeper. This one is more reddish, so I'm going to alternate that with other colors. Like what would you add to red to get it to go kind of brown? So I'm going to add this green. I'll probably add some blue. This is another scrap I have here. I'm going to mix all these colors up. And just keep tweaking with all my scraps. You know, if it's still in that family of like red, pink hue, then I'll add more blues and greens to it. And if it gets too blue and green, then I'll add some orange and reds. You know, whatever I have in my scrap boxes, you know. And eventually I'll have to add some white. These are my scrap boxes. I got all kinds of weird colors in here that I can add to it just to get a tone of gray. And then when I get a tone of gray, I'll add white to it to get to the... um value of gray I want. So I'm going to, first I'll start by adding the blue. Maybe I'll just leave a little bit to the side so you guys can see it. I'm going to blend this up too. Um, but I want to show you as we go. So I'm going to add the blues and greens and stuff and then we can try to tint it. That was out of their little pile of scrap and it definitely has more of the tone I want. But it's not. It's still a little brown. It's not quite gray. If you have gray clay, great. If you already have a gray scrap, awesome. And if you just want to mix black and white together, just do that. But I'm looking for a pale gray of like an elephant. Actually, and then I'll do like a ball maybe this size of before I add white. So I'll get a darker gray. And then before I had a whole bunch of white to get a light gray. Um, just for any shadows on the elephant, I'll keep like a ball like this that we can use for like shadows of the darker tone. So I'm going to add, first I'll start with the blue and maybe this little piece of green I have here. Yes, I just did my nails. Um, and then I'll, you know, add as I go. So you may hear my fiance in the background talking to his boss, but I kept a little ball aside just to show you the color differences I've gotten, and I've sped this up about four times. I'm pretty happy with the color it's getting there, but it's, it was still a little more red, so now I keep adding green and blues to it until I got a color I was really happy with. I'm going to keep a bunch of it to the side or a little bit to the side for a darker shade, and then I'm going to add some white to this to get a lighter shade. And actually later I added a, a little black to some of that first color to get a light tone, medium tone, and a dark tone. I'm just folding this up to get it into a ball and pushing all the air from the middle out. Because I conditioned it on a setting 2, not even a setting 0. Rolling it up into a little sausage because it's easier to divide it. And I'm going to take two-thirds about and keep right now and then I'm going to keep a third to the side and I'm going to be again shaping the head of the elephant and have fun with this you know we're in quarantine we're all shut down I mean I'm not doing dental cleanings every day I'm at home I'm probably on let's see 7 14 15 day 18 I've only left the house twice to go grocery shopping, so try not to stress about money. So I'm just shaping the head here. I'm going to make a little magnet pen holder. So I'm going to even this up again into a sausage. It's easier to cut in half than it is to cut a ball in half. And I'm going to roll it into a circle and start shaping the ears of the elephant. And these are great. This would be a great like, kid project to do with you. Obviously, you need blades and stuff, so that's not good for kids. But, you know, what about, like, a cow and have the tongue coming out or a giraffe and have the tongue coming out and have that be what holds a pen? Um, you could make wire antennas hold the pen. There's all different kinds of things you can make.
God, you could even make a little spirally giraffe neck and have that hold the pen. Or a tail of something. So I'm using a little silicone tool to burnish it up. I'm not going to burnish these like to where you can't see my seams at all. That's not what I'm planning on doing here. I'm going to keep it very characterish. Putting some indents in the ears. Whatever. You know, just make it fun and cute. And they're not perfectly even, but whatever. I'm adding a little kind of indent in with this ball tool, kind of indenting the center part of the ear a little bit but they're not human ears they're elephant ears then i have this texture from this non-slip mat that's under my big tile people have asked me about this big tile i got it from my sister's fiance he does construction and i asked him to keep an eye out when they're tearing out jobs for a good piece of tile and it's matte so it doesn't reflect my light as much so this piece is on setting five. This is a medium tone or the original tone that we didn't add white to. And I'm going to put this on the ear too. I don't know why, just because I feel like it. You do not have to at all. Just rounding off the corners here. I hope everybody's staying safe and sane. It's hard when you're not working. It's like, yeah, who wouldn't have loved a week off? But like to have this much time off, I mean, I still have another two weeks before right now we're going back to work. And then Trump just said the 30th. We were planning on going back the 15th, which would have been a month. It's like financially, it's scary. Even with unemployment, it's... I make way more than what unemployment's offering to cover my student loans. So um, this pink is just a scrap pink I had. Well, it was darker than this, but I added a bunch of white to it. And it's on setting six, and I'm going to use this for the ears. I'm just, again, burnishing it in there. Yeah, this is such a hard time for everybody. It's It really is. Our schools are shut down for the full year, the rest of the year. So all the parents are having troubles. You know, everybody's in the same boat financially. I mean, you got the mortgage, the bills, $800 a month in student loans. That's what's really making me nervous. Even if they get rid of the interest, I mean, still, it's... What? Okay, so say I pay $400 a month in interest, I still have $400 a month credit cards, all of that. And it's like, oh my god, how, how do you make it a month and a half and they'll pay? Because what I do for work, even if um, we're seeing dental emergencies, I'm a dental hygienist, so I do cleanings. I wouldn't be the one going in with the doctor to work on the patients. So... I mean, I could. It's hard to get a job just for two weeks and go to Hannaford's and be like, hey, I'm looking for work for two weeks. Like, what is that? You know what I mean? So I don't know. So I still have some of the light tone. I use some for the ears and I still have some and I'm going to make the trunk. I just rolled it out to a sausage. I'm kind of flattening it off a little bit. I'm going to have it way longer than it should be because I want it to like wrap around the pen. I'm just kind of, th that pen was really fat on the end, so. And I'm going to pull out a little part skinny here and that's how I'm going to stick it to the face. And all of this is raw, so I don't need any liquid clay. You See that little skinny part? And that's what I'm going to stick it to the face with. I have this Dental Explorer. This is a ODU 1112 Dental Explorer that has a nice fat handle that I can judge for most pens. 
putting a little indent in the nose and I was trying to see if it would be cute if I put like two little pink balls. I was trying to get the right size down in the nose, but I thought it might have looked stupid, but so I'm going to take some of the medium tone and I'm going to make a little circle to put down in the nose so it looks darker. I just used a ball tool in the nose to kind of push in there so it looks like it has a snout like the nostrils, you know. And again, in real life, this only took me like 30 minutes. So it's not like I was sitting here sculpting forever. Not like my mom's angel I showed you guys around Christmas that I didn't do a video on it because it took me hours and hours to get it to look as it did. But So I'm going to take some of the medium tone and I was just going to give him a couple eyebrows. Why not? Give them facial expressions. Have fun with it. See? And then I was going to take some on a setting six, pretty thin. This is the dark tone. I'm going to give them a base of the eyes using those small little cutters I have. But if you really smush it down to your tile, hopefully it won't get stuck in the cutter. And I'm going to take some white, again on a setting six. Smush it down to my tile, and then again, a smaller, slightly smaller one. Hopefully it'll stick to my tile and not in my cutter. And then put those on. I mean, you don't need to do the dark gray behind it at all. You could just do a white and a black dot. You could do googly eyes. I do anything you want. This is actually a really dark brown, but it looked black enough that I used it. With a ball tool, just flattening his little eyes out. I decided to give him eyelashes too. You know, so <laughs> whatever you want to do. You could paint on these if you want after. Give them a little pink tone in the cheeks, you know. You could paint eyes on. Give them a mouth if you want. You could even do like a frog and where its legs are bent, like it's have its two legs coming down in front of its body and then its two back legs. Have them come out a little bit and you could slide the pen through the two back legs. Or the two legs off to the side, you know what I mean? Or even the front legs or something. Kind of wedge it in there. There, got some eyelashes. <laughs> I think it's cute. So I'm showing you the dark, medium, light. So I'm going to take the medium and the dark tones. And I'm going to make some wrinkles on the trunk. Why not? So I'm just trying to cut some even thicknesses. And again, you don't have to do any of this. You can do it if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm just going to alternate. These are all medium or dark tone. I don't know yet, but I just kind of put them on. Just setting them on there so I can still move them. It's nice and easy because a lot of times they'll stick to like a needle tool. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other color. And kind of alternate. And again, they don't need to be perfectly spaced or anything. They don't need to be straight. Have fun. Maybe this will give you an idea of something to play with, you know?
I'm just going to try in my, this is my size, sizer kind of thing. If you have something at home that you can size it. If you have pens that you use to put veneers on that you can bake to hold this, great. Um, I don't have any pens that I know of that I can bake. So I'm just scratching again, giving some texture. And because this is going to be the only bake, I'm going to bake it for a full hour at 275 because it's mainly Primo. And I figured most of you probably didn't have something this fat and round and metal. So I was trying to figure out a way you could use. So I was going to try cardboard, but that didn't work. And I'm going to put in a piece of paper. Now, when I went to just stick the paper in, and obviously, and I rolled it up, it expanded when I let go. And the edge of the paper was causing an indent in my trunk. So I will show you that in a second. I took the trunk off for a sec because I was getting some indents there from the paper. So I had to tape it closed with some masking tape, which ended up baking fine. But this is like cheap masking tape. As you will see in a second, it didn't even hold. See, I got a line there and lines under there. I'm going to re-burnish my nose back on. It's actually really stuck now that it's baked. I thought little pieces of masking tape would work. No, this masking tape is junk. I got to stick it to itself. And I will bake it like that. Now these are magnets. This is a kind I have. And in another video, I already went over why I'm doing this. But I'm just causing some gouges out of it with my stamp carver. Um, you could use your Dremel or you could use your blade. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> scratch it up so that way the glue or the E6000 I'm going to use has something to stick into on both the magnet and the polymer clay. Because on times I haven't done this, I've went to take the magnet off the fridge, my polymer clay piece came off and the three magnets were stuck to the fridge because um, the back of the either the magnet was too smooth or the polymer clay was too smooth so I'm just cutting circles out and I'm just gouging it to give it texture I'm just getting that paper out of there see so I'm just measuring where these are going to go and my magnet broke so I have another little piece here and I'm just scoring it a little bit so I know where to cut grooves into the back of this and you could scratch this with your blade I'm using a carbide bit here just scratching it up a little bit in multiple directions giving it some texture and then putting little holes burp, 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 kind of going through nothing super deep but just something for the E6000 to grab onto and it might just be the E6000 is not the greatest type of glue. I should do a test on a bunch of different kinds of, like Gorilla Glue, Super Glue. From my last video, you saw there was a hole in this metal tube. It punctured, and so I'm trying to use it up before it all dries on me. Yeah, I might need to do, like, Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, um... Elmer's glue. I should glue on different magnets with different glues and make sure one, they're polymer clay compatible, and two, see how well they hold. I don't make a lot of magnets, but since I'm home for so long, I'm making different things. I'm trying to give you guys inspiration, trying to keep myself busy. Not hard projects. So this next one we're going to do is just a veneer and I'm using the scrap from the video I showed the other day, that blue, and then just some green scrap. And I have some canes here, some old canes. My rose cane's probably nine months old and then these are probably six months or so. And I have these glass cabochons here. Now these glass ones are on my Amazon ambassador page. They are calibrated or they were when I bought them. Um... And that's what I'm going to use to dome this piece. If you have a round jar, great. If you have a round bowl, um, a light bulb, I use these just because that's what I have. I don't have a spent light bulb around me. Um, whatever you have to give yourself a dome, I'm just using this size. It's what I have. 
I made it bigger, you'll see at the end the pen would have probably sit in further. So I'm just laying, this is not about perfection. This is not a pendant. This is about using up your old canes. And these canes are old. I mean, some of them were cracking on me and everything. Just use them up and have fun. You know? I mean, you're going to see a little of the green behind it, but not much. But use up a scrap color. Don't use a brand new color. I uh, put these canes, as you saw, in um, a little deli paper. And I had them in my pant line just warming up because I don't have big boobs. So I can't stick them in my bra or anything. Because when they're old and they've been sitting there for a while, you've got to get them warmed up. So if you're sitting for a while, just kind of in between your legs or anything. I'm pushing straight down on them at first. And I'm not really concerned with distortion or anything. I'm not rolling with my roller. I'm just burnishing it. Same thing, just burnishing with my roller. My little mini one. Trying to get everything flat. trying to warm it up the hair because they cooled off when I sliced them. So I'm going to lay this over your form, whether that's a light bulb, like I said, a glass bowl, a jar, whatever. Trying to stretch it a little bit, trying to warm it up with my hands. It's moving fast, but if it was moving slower, you would see that I looked at different parts that were cracking. I'm going to cut off some excess because it's about uh, four times the speed. Kind of beveling the edges a little bit, smoothing it off of my hand. <clears throat> now I'm going to decide where I want the pen to sit. And I'm going to cut an oval or like a eye shape out of it. And again, I'm just beveling these edges with my finger. And then I'm going to make an indent and indent this in a little bit where the pen's going to sit. So I kind of thinned out that top part from the side there. I don't know if you just saw that. That was really fast. I should have held it still for a little longer. But put an impression where the pen will sit in there on that top right there. Okay, so now I'm going to break it off. It's still pretty warm. Just go around each edge real slow. And I'm going to trim out a little of this right in here. It seemed like the pen had a hard time going in. So it's only been baked for a half hour at 275 because I'm going to bake the back on again. Once the back goes on, I'll bake it for a full hour. So I'm just widening the hole for the, the pen to sit into. Just using the back of my or my uh, craft knife as a guide. Unless you have a really, really fat pen, but that's a pencil, a mechanical pencil. And I put that indent at the top so the pen wouldn't sit out very far from it. If that makes sense. I wish I would have paused and really showed you that. I'm just squishing on the back. Trim off the excess. This is going to bake 275 for a full hour. A full hour at your recommended temperature. I'm just kind of smoothing down. But the back started to collapse in, so I'm pushing it out a little bit with a pen. I'm just going to bevel off this back edge. I don't want to go through the clay if I can help it, but just make it a little thinner on the edge. And I was just pushing it flat down to the tile with my with my tools here. I was just trying to make a groove. So 60 minutes. And there the pen can fit in. I'm going to sand 400, 600, 800, 800 to 1,000. Just quick sand, quick buff with the orange and white wheels. And that's it. And I'll put the magnets on the same way. And there they are on the fridge. Pretty easy.